Welcome back. A group called Moon Express has become the first private company to obtain permission from our U.S. government to land on the moon, and it says it plans to sell tickets for just $10,000 a piece in as little as 10 years. Now, meanwhile, NASA says a new form of propulsion relying on electromagnetic waves could potentially get us from Earth to Mars in 70 days. That's down from six months using conventional rockets. Are we at the dawn of a new and glorious space age? Joining me now, one of my all-time favorites, Dr. Michio Kaku, theoretical physicist and professor at City College of New York, right here in New York. Welcome back, Dr. Kaku. Glad to be on your show, as usual. So, I love the idea of space travel, whether it's uh, close by, that, that little rock next door we call the moon, or the red planet. So, let's talk about this lunar journey. $10,000 in, in 10 years? How is that possible? That sounds very inexpensive. Well, when you plan your Christmas vacations of the future, you may want to put that down on the calendar, right? 10 years from now, let's go to this crater, let's go to that valley on the moon. Mm. Well, before we get um, all hot and heavy about this, realize that $10,000 today will only put a pound of anything just in near-Earth orbit. Oh, wow. Not forget, even forget the moon. near the just moon. Just in near-Earth yeah. orbit, that's $10,000 a pound. To put you in outer space just going around the Earth is like your weight in gold. Wow. That's the cost of space travel. Now, for you to ride on the space station costs about $20 million. Wow. 20 million to go whizzing around the Earth. And if you would just want to go straight up 70 miles and come back down on Spaceship Two, $200,000 bargain basement ticket. Quite a roller coaster ride, though, if you get a free fall for quite a while. That's right. And we had a, um, unfortunately, there was a fatality with the pilot, uh, I think, about a year ago. Yeah. So it makes you think twice about, well, maybe not this year <laughs> vacation yeah. in outer space. So maybe in 10 years, though, this uh, the private space exploration is really moving us forward. And uh, a part of that, as you note, is because uh, now these rockets are recyclable. That's right. There have been two major changes with the space age. One is the a reusable booster rocket. Yeah. SpaceX has pioneered that successful launches of a rocket which takes off and lands with this booster rocket hull intact. Wow. Second of all, private enterprise has yes. driven costs down. Love it. No more of these bloated bureaucrats spending as much money as they want because yeah. we're up against the Russians. The Russians aren't competing with us anymore. Now it's private enterprise. All right, so let's talk about the trip to Mars because it's these electromagnetically propelled uh, boosters themselves themselves, which, you know, I, I don't understand how this works, and in layman's terms, you say that it has some problems overcoming uh, a few of Newton's laws. That's right. Uh, mm -hmm. but, but how would that electromagnetic effect work for transportation? Well, first of all, we use chemical rockets today. We have hydrogen and oxygen. We burn it together, and we get thrust coming out the other end. Mm -hmm. That is extremely inefficient. We need a new way of getting into outer space. Yeah. So the next generation of rockets could be ion rockets. Rockets. That is like a TV set throwing ions out the other end. Now, there could be a game changer. Some physicists say, no way. Yeah. However, who knows? It's an electromagnetic chamber, basically microwaves mm -hmm. and radar, oscillating inside a chamber, putting out mild thrust in that direction. They did a test of it. It's going to be published in a, in a scientific journal. So some people are saying, aha, that's the proof in the pudding. Other people are saying, not so fast, yeah. not so Which fast. Which camp are you in? I'm in the not so fast category because <laughs> okay. I believe in Newton's laws of motion yeah. until you have to go to Einstein in the speed of light. Yeah. So I think that we have to look twice. But again, there's a lot riding on this because chemical rockets will only go so far yeah, that's right. before we have to boldly go where no one has gone before. Oh, well, uh, speaking of that, John Glenn, the first human to orbit the Earth, dead, uh, the first American, American to orbit right. the Earth, uh, dead right. at 95 years old. Um, what impact did his story have on you? I think it galvanized the American public and people began to realize that outer space is not just for Buck Rogers, yeah. it's for ordinary people that we too can one day explore the entire universe. Yeah. So I think he and Yuri Gagarin literally opened the door because we've been trapped on this little mud ball called the Earth for mm -hmm. thousands of years. But there's a whole universe out there waiting to be discovered. Yeah, looking up at it for uh, thousands of years, just mm -hmm. uh, saying, universe, you're a big tease. But right. being able to realize that is uh, extraordinary. And, and one day we'll reach out and touch the stars. Yeah, it's incredible. Thank you, Dr. Kaku. Appreciate it.